Father, we praise Your name, God. Thank You for Your blood, Jesus. Thank You for the Holy Spirit. Thank You for the truth, God. We thank You that You tell us what You want to say by Your Spirit, God. You don't, we don't say what we want to say by tradition or by a calendar, but by Your Spirit, God. We say what the Spirit of truth wants to say. We say what the Spirit wants to say to the church today. In the mighty name of Jesus. I've been wrestling with God all morning because <laughs> I'm like, I, you know that saying like, um, beating a dead horse? I'm like, oh God, I don't want to beat a dead horse. He's like, well, the horse is not dead. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, kill it already. Because five years ago, I preached a similar message on uh, uh, Resurrection Sunday or whatever you, they call it. Um, tradition calls it, and it was called Truth and Tradition. Well, today's message is called Relationship or Ritual, but I'm taking it down a little deeper, and I'm going to explain because I also want to share, like, before I knew anything, before I even knew what this was or that was, I knew something, but I didn't know nothing, but I knew that he didn't like something. So in this big church that I was in, I actually went to the pastor and said, why don't you call it Resurrection Sunday and he laughed at me and he said it's Easter it's in the Bible and then I looked it up and I'm like it is so then I had to really find out what it really meant back then but I'm like oh my god I felt so stupid but really he was the one that was actually stupid because the Holy Spirit told me as a prophet in that church to go tell him that's what he wanted him to start doing but see what ended up happening with that man is he got in an adulterous affair because he was already in spiritual adultery and he wouldn't obey the Lord and what God wanted to do. And they lost the whole church. And the million dollar building got turned over to the world. Because of these things that God is trying to do. And the last thing I want to do is preach, but I'm going to actually teach us something. Because a lot of people probably don't even know. So even, like, I didn't even know what I was doing. Like, the last 40 minutes, God just showed me some truth how I can show something that no one else can disprove it because I was trying to google and say well, what and, and a lot of they have actually turned the I'm teaching today not preaching so they actually turned in um, to where they made what was something else something now and God said that's exactly what they're going to do in this country through through um, history how they can change history to make one thing that was something else become something else with something else. Basically just changing things because people can continue to believe a lie and say things over and over and over again or, or, or keep hold on these things and make the lies turn into truth. But the only truth is what the spirit of truth says and not what man says, not what tradition says, not what the world says, but what the Holy Spirit says. So... And then it goes into deeper. Why do so many want to hold on to these things? It's rebellion. And that's why not, they will not see the power of God in their rebellious ways. Of course, God is going to move among the living to raise the dead all the time. So let's see what in, in, in Acts chapter 12, the only place written the word Easter. Relationship or ritual. Now that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to, to, to vex certain the church. He went to kill the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw he killed John and it pleased the Jews. See, no one talks about this, about the same passage. And because they saw please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. So, hey, hey, well, let's get Peter. Then that time was the days of the unleavened bread. So that was the Passover time. That was what the Jews were in the midst of celebrating the unleavened bread, which was also the same time as we know back then that uh, Jesus was also crucified but this was way later this is acts chapter 12 not acts chapter 1 not uh what was written right when jesus was going to the cross he's going to say and i'm gonna 
began this holiday called Easter, and you're going to remember my resurrection day uh, every day at this time. He never said that. Obviously, he actually said the opposite. He said, do not make anything we do or say a tradition. Do not make it a ritual. I have come to bring the spirit of life and truth that whatever you do, you'll be led by the spirit. Every day, like every day, how many people are preaching one sermon in the church today out of disobedience to the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit trying to say? Don't do that today. Because it, because line upon line, priest on priest, Jesus says that. Do not do this. Do not bring in these rituals. Do not bring in these. I'm coming to set you free. The Jews do this. The Jews do the feast, the past, all the things. But I've come to set you free. So he says, they apprehend the soldiers to keep him. And he says, and for the, cor- the, the, the court turnians of soldiers to keep him. Intending, so hold on, we're going to wait. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So it's like, wait for after Easter. So wait a second. You think Herod and then they're killing Christians. Say, well, you know, the Christians are observing their holiday now. So let's just wait till their holiday passes. No, it was the Herod's holiday. It was the pagans' rituals. It was the... It was, the, it was a paganistic time. They wanted to wait for their holiday to end so they can go ahead and kill. They don't care what the Christians were doing. They wanted to obliviate. They wanted to wipe it off the earth. So how can we take something? And then we have churches all around and pastors saying this. And you want to believe the doctrines that are bringing division in the church and follow them and they can't even stop celebrating a pagan holiday? And then many, this fight, this is in 215, and the resistance in the, but now many people have converted it to saying resurrection day, and God's like, I don't even want that. I don't want my resurrection to become an annual thing. It's an everyday thing. It's an every minute thing. It happens minutely, daily. We are the resurrected in Jesus Christ. We have the power every day. You see? Oh, well, well, we'll do that. No, he's like, that's even wrong. Oh, oh well, we've done this now. Resurrection Sunday. He's risen. He's, in, the, in the church, he, the, people should say that every day. Every day we meet. We meet because he rose. Why use a calendar to bind yourself? Why use a calendar and then now use a name that the world uses? So let's get into this deep because now God just showed me something that because if you do it, it's like, oh yeah, it's not big. This is what, it's the new life. And it's all, no, it all came from a pagan celebration that they converted. They, they interlocked it with, 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 the, with the Christians. And they said, well, we'll do it the time that Jesus resurrected. But never did you ever see them in all the epistles talking about a day, years, months went off. Peter never said, well, or Paul never said, or any of them there said, oh, Easter's coming. Let's us do that. Do this. No, they never talked about it. Why? Because it was an everyday thing. They were breaking bread from house to house every single day. They didn't even go by a calendar. They went by the Spirit. This Constantine guy brought a calendar in the church. They were leaving it, the, the, the things, and they were keeping uh, the days. But then this other guy came in and said, you know what? And even before he changed the calendar... He got converted supposedly after he even changed some things. So I'm going to show you here in the timeline. But then it goes deep down to the heart of these people that they are not in love with the truth. Like, it, is it a big deal? I don't know. I don't think it is, but God does. You see? And when we... What do you mean? Because Jesus says it is, and we're going to get into that too. I could care less. But why, when I was really radical for God, it really bothered me. Now I've gotten a little bit more, and it doesn't bother me as much. And I'm like, well, if they don't want it, they don't want it, whatever. But now it's like, it still bothers God. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison and made without ceasing into the church. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound by chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, an angel Lord came to him, and the light shined in prison, 
and smote Peter and on the side and raised him up and saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off. We could make that a, a, a holiday too. Peter got the chains broken off. An angel appeared to him. Let's make a holiday here, make a holiday here. Oh, yeah, and you know, when, when um, Paul got his eyes, said, like, we'll make that a holiday. Come on, guys. Not, and Jesus said, don't even focus no more on the holy days. Be holy every day. Don't we get, when are we going to get it, church? Do you really want the power? Do you really want the relationship? Do you really want this? So when was this? So I was, I was like, well, how long was the book of Acts? Because that was chapter 12. So the book of Acts was documented for 30 years, they say. Theologians and scholars said, the question is, nothing definite, but how many years it covers most about 30 years. How many years did the book of Acts span? The book of Acts, of, they call the apostles. Well, we know that's a lie too because, man, it's a book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit. They see, so you can't go by even what they say, but we can get a timeline because they've done mighty research in that. Period was about 28 years, and they say to 30 years. And from 33 to 61. And we know after he died, they, it was after death. Okay? It's just sort of found because people were like, oh no, it was the, ch the church. No, the church never started this. They adopted it because they didn't want to be killed and beaten. They wanted to be able to worship at the corner like it's going to happen in the end time. There's going to be an overground church and an underground church, a real church. And then uh, like in China, there's the church, there's a Christianity fake, and then there's the real Christians that are, are underground. The Gospel according to Luke concludes that Acts begins name Christ between and heaven was apparently from perhaps 70 and 80 CA. Okay, so then I was like, well, then this Constantine that changed and brought these things together, when was that happened? Because that's basically when Easter got brought into the church. 300 AD. So even when it was written in the Bible, when Acts was written, we know for sure it had nothing to do with the church because it was brought in to the church at 300 after his death. So there's the argument right there that Christians try to keep. The facts are there. It took me 40 minutes there on the computer to figure it out by the scripture and by that. So, Constantine sued the dict making the major changes in the Julian calendar in 301. He introduced the seven with Sunday as the first day of the week. And Christian, and, and made Christian holidays and fixed the dates, grafting Easter into the Christianity, into the calendar. Three, three, 12 years later, it says he got converted to Christianity. I don't know how much converted he was. We don't know all that, but that's what they say. And so this conversion, so it wasn't even something he was trying to do to bring it in. He, 300... 301 A.D., he changes the calendar and says, Oh, Christians, yeah, we're going to bring it. Because they were being martyred and killed. He's made it legal now to be a Christian, is what he was trying to do. What a great guy. So, But, you know, you have to also worship all these other guys. You know, you can, it's just like in India, right, or different places. You can be Hindu with all these. Yeah, it wasn't, you know, you can do this, but you have to allow other things to happen. Easter was originally the celebration of Ishtar, the Assyrian, um, Assyrian and the Babylonian goddess of fertility and sex. Constant, and Constantine decided to, to Christianize the empire, so Easter was changed to represent Jesus then. It was changed to represent by a pagan person, by a pagan god, so, but it's not changed in the Bible. Are we not supposed to... Follow the Bible or traditions of men, and especially paganism that's been brought into the church. So why do every all these churches rebel? Because they do not want to stand for the truth. They want to man please. They want. They don't want to cause anything problems, and that's why God is going to reject them. It's not that they're rejecting just the truth; they're rejecting God and the Word of God. The last day church is not going to be like that. And Constantine decided to Christianize the empire, so, and it was pronounced Isitar. It was about celebrating the fertility and sex. 
So, how many people in the world celebrate the Passover? Nobody, right? So why, why do you think half the world still celebrates Easter even? Because it's Satan's brewing it. He's leading them. It's, it, why do even some false Jewish people celebrate Easter and, and this really? And everybody, even the other ones, they decide to celebrate Easter because it's really not of, of the Holy Bible. It's not about Jesus. And how, and, and, when, and, and, and how many, and only a few real religious, well, I'll be careful, but Christians that want to be Jews even celebrate the Passover and it's in the Bible because we've been set free to follow Christ by the Spirit of God. Christianity was hated so much, why would the world so easily adopt Easter? Think about it, though. Spirits, right? Easter's okay, but oh, don't talk about the blood, right? Yeah, come on, man. Unless it's backwards or the other way around, and that's what it is, right? It was brought in. Religion will always say, well, look how many people came to church that day. Look, this person got saved and that person got saved. Look, this happened. We had a play. And they'll say, well, at least, at least, Jesus' name is being lifted up. All these things are always said to make excuses to compromise. How about doing the truth and seeing much more than that happen? Never our ways justify the means. Never. Only His way justifies the end. All these denominations that bring the division say that their interpretation of the Bible is right. So why are they still celebrating paganism? The same people that are doing Easter, the same people that are telling you in sensationalism in the Baptist church that the, the Holy Spirit and the gifts are gone. So why were you going to listen to that? The full truth, right? We want the truth and nothing but the truth. Holy days or holidays or holy days? Transformed or conformed? Truth or lies? Carnal or spiritual? Mixture or set apart? This is everything in the New Testament. Relationship or ritual? Rebellion or submission? Truth or tradition? And so the whole New Testament is about the truth. Do we adopt traditions just because everybody else has? Or do we see the truth and we stand in the truth? We don't enforce the truth, but we preach the truth. We do not bow to the, the things that religion and tradition do because we want to please God. And we say, well, God doesn't really care. Well, yes, He does because it's all written. It's written. Why do you say that? Because Jesus even spoke to John in the Isle of Patmos in the book of Revelation in chapter 2 and 3 about the works of the Nicolaitans. But I guarantee you 98% of the people in the church don't even care or know what the works of the Nicolaitans was. All they care about is going to heaven. Right? But Jesus said, I hate those. And then he admonished one church for hating those works too. And then the other church, he rebuked them for, for, um, for, for allowing the works of the Nicolaitans in the church. So who is Nicholas? And the early Christian sect mentioned twice in the book of Revelations. The adherents was called the Nicolaitans. Nicol it was a heretical sect, a mainstream church, that brought in paganism and different things into the church in the Ephesus and Pergamum in the chapter church. And Jesus commanded, hating the works of the Nicolaitans. So what, and what do we know? What does Bob say? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? today, right? Everything is spiritual too. We just put another face on it. It's okay to put, instead of using a fertility goddess with her boobs out, we'll just turn it into an Easter bunny and make it pink. But the, the eggs were doing something, but there's a God, there's a devil behind it, right? Bowing, kissing Baal, that's kissing Baal. You know, that's why people say, oh, there's no persecution in America. What? Because you're so traditionalized. Even unbelievers do what you do. What's the difference? Start doing what the Bible says and see how, how much uh, you're not persecuted anymore. And you'll also be persecuted in those that say 
they are of God, but by their works they deny Him. And this has been preached. And then we have the ones that are totally so on to this thing, like it's so ah, and they beat everybody up and they want to think they're so prideful and all that. God hates that too. But let's just forget about it. Let's just drop the names. Let's just do the right thing. So we can all get together in the Spirit and we don't have to rebuke one another every single year. And they call us divisive when they're the ones not following the Word of God. Thou has, which I also hate. He says he, the church of paganists is rebuked. So he has some of the worshiping, they worship in the midst other things. Several in the early church, the Father mentioned a group including the Irenaeus, the Hippolytus, the, all these names I'm not going to go through. And the, de the deacon Nicholas was an author of the heresy in a sect. And remember, Paul talked a lot about heresies that try to come in right away. Got, of course the devil's going to try to make her heresies, but when was a lot of that was written? A lot of that stuff came in way after the books were written. If you follow the years, how long does a man live after the cross? 60, 100 years? When was it? 300 years after this was brought into the church. Paul never talked about it. None of them talked about it. Makes you wonder, huh? Who brought it in? Man. And who, who's God going to use to take it out? Man. Who's God going to use to make it? Modern day apostles and prophets. And who's going to want to keep it? Man. Not the spirit. The spirit of man. Why? Because it's easier just to keep what, what's been conformed into the church then change it. Because then you've got to explain it. Then you're going to have resistance. And just like in your family, when you don't want to celebrate the paganist things anymore, they, they look at you like you, you're an alien. And all you're doing is like, no, I just want to obey my father. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't excite me anymore because I know it's not of him. Why don't we fellowship daily? Why don't we become one in the Spirit? Why don't we be led to have fellowship by the Spirit? Because He wants us to fellowship. He says, do not forsake the assembling together. How much more is it when God joins us together instead of a, a day or a holiday? That's why there's so much strife. There's so much because we're trying to follow our rituals. We're trying to make it. We're trying to make holidays holy days because we're Christians now. It's not a big deal until it comes against the truth. Until you start saying your tradition is more important than your freedom in Christ. When, you, when your, your tradition, you bow down to it instead of following the Word of God. It's okay when it's not a big deal because it's not a big deal for those that don't love the truth. It's not a big deal for Christians that, don't, that only want to be a three-day three day a year attendee but to us that meet every day it's a problem because now we got this we gotta we gotta stop the work of god we gotta stop the moving of the spirit we gotta stop what god's doing the 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 the, the changing of being transformed into the image to now stop and celebrate something that man's made and if we don't we're religious if we don't we're legalist if we don't then we have the problem if we don't we're 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 we're, we're too radical. No, we just don't have time for it. Just like birthdays were brought in by the Egyptians. Candles and cakes. God never wanted us to honor man on a certain day. He wanted us to honor man on whenever the Spirit leads us to. When someone's hurting, it says when someone's down, lift them up. When someone's exalted, rejoice with them. He never wanted these things to become traditions because what they do is they... Make the gospel no effect. Because now i got to do this, but the Holy Spirit says, but you should be over here praying for this person in the hospital. Oh, but it's this person's birthday. Now, if you want to honor somebody, do it privately. And that's why we don't do the cakes here. Because if we forget one and not the other, then what comes in? Jealousy. This one's hurt. Oh, look what they did for this person. See it all. It all brings divisions. This person had a big celebration. We'll do it once in a while if the Spirit leads us Maybe a 20-year anniversary or a 20-year. But it's, it's spiritual. It's not, oh, this year, this day, we have to do something. But if you're led to do it, do it. Maybe somebody needs their birthday celebrated. Then do it by the Spirit. But when we make it a must, 
There's a day every year. What if that's every day we have to do it? What if you have a church of 500 people and every day you got to celebrate a birthday? You have to go out to dinner. You have to, right? Because that's what he's saying. Do not rely on traditions. Honor people. Yes, if it's their birthday, of course you want to do that. We, 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 we do that all privately, one another, but we do not try to make a big event out of things like they're doing over the resurrection because it should be a daily focus. The resurrection was a daily. Somebody's getting resurrected from the dead right this minute. Okay? Jesus didn't say, worship me dead on the cross. He didn't say, worship me to my resurrection. He said, worship him in spirit and in truth. The truth worship Him. And when we obey the truth, we're worshiping Him. And when we worship Him in spirit, that's whenever He leads us to worship Him. So when we come here, because He said to come here, when He said this, until He changes it, we just obey Him. You see, it's, it's real freedom. Real freedom is, I don't have to. And He says, go take a vacation. Great. Of course, the reason they made these things, if you knew... Because most people were in the slave mentality. They made these things to appease the pressure, the stress off people. They made celebrations of paganism. And all different reasons to worship their God. To set their work about, To just like God did it. They copied God like the devil always does. He counterfeits everything. They made these de- days to the fake gods so people could actually have a Sabbath day to the devil. And that's what all those things came from. And then they brought it in way after the Bible. And then we just go along with it because I was born in 19 whatever. And you were born in 19 whatever. Some of you in 2000 whatever, whatever, whatever. And then all of a sudden now just because the mainstream church says this. No, what does the Bible say that's been around? That's never ending. That is the authoritative word of God. It's not what man's opinion is. It's not what this church in this denomination think is okay it's what does jesus say is okay and no let's just kill the horse so we don't have to talk about it anymore i'm tired of it but what why not because of the pride of man because of carnality because people do not they would rather bow down to baal and instead of have in intimacy with the word and the holy spirit Nicolaites, the second chapter of the book of Revelations, yet it was evident the works of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. Revelation 2, 6. But I have a few things against you, church. You have some of you that hold the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the people of Israel so that they would eat things, sacrifice, and practice fornication. So you also, some of you hold the teachings, the traditions, and the rituals of the Nicolaitans. Repent. If not, I will come and make war against them with the sword of my mouth. What is God? He's doing it now. We're warring against it with the word of truth. What is the sword? The word of the Lord. What is his mouth? Where the word comes out of. With the sword. This is how we're making war. How do you defeat lies is to preach the truth. Right? How does we overcome the, the, lying, the lying devil is to speak truth and let people decide. And God will bear witness with the truth. That's how we have social clubs and we have the real remnant of the body of Christ. And it talks about a bishop, this guy in the Western church, 636, 80, how many years? How many lifetimes? How many generations? How many things got added in and taken out in 636 A.D.? And how many years now are we? 2021. If that were, we're calling it maybe the year, who knows, right? 2000. Let's say everyone lived to 100 years. That's 20 something generations that things can be changed. So thank God we still have the book. And it's not in the book. And when it's in the book, it was for the pagans, for Herod and his, and the unbelievers. I can go on and on here with all about, then it comes, talks all about a Deuteronomy, how these things come together, and all these things. 
and in the shrines, in the temple of Balaam, and the fornication, and they, even the Corinthian church started bringing that in, even in the beginning, and Paul rebuked them. Talked about the heresies in 1 Corinthians 6. Although you have not proved the scholarly spouse's interpretation, and this guy, John Henry, maintains a comparison between the Nicolaitans and Balaam, proves the fornication that was spoken of the crime. Now, we know in the book of Revelations, Jezebel's spirit's here, so the spirits that are bringing those things to the church still want to do that. You see, when Jesus talks about something, he's talking about a spiritual aspect of something. When he talks about the spirit of Elijah, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the spirit of God that was on Elijah. So when he talks about, we know Elijah doesn't come back in spirit because he's a man. When he says that the spirit of, of Jezebel, he's talking about the spirits that seduce Jezebel to, to absorb authority, to manipulate, to have control, to all the things that Jezebel does, and to seduce people to eat things sacrificed to what? Other gods. He was talking about the church. That was how many years ago? Wait, almost then. It's starting in the beginning. Do you, what, what has changed? Has it gotten worse or has it gotten better? When God does a revival, things get better, right? We go back to the Word. Then we have sects that come up and, and all these dry religious people that only want the Word, but we want both. We want the truth and the Spirit because that's what Jesus wants. And we're going to get into that even more. And they called it Love Feast. And then even in the book of Jews, it calls things about that. It echoes the behavior and the admonition of Paul and the Corinthians. So we even know Paul lived, what? It was about 60 years whatever it says, so let's say 100. So these spirits, and he says, seducing spirits creeping in the church was written way back then. Does you think the church is stronger now or less? Why do you think? Because of the spirits that have crept in. Do you think more people are walking power like almost everyone in the church? Like Stephen, all of them, were, they were waiting tables and then uh, casting out demons and getting killed for the power of God and healing people. And why, why do you think the power of God has diminished more in the church? Because of the seducing spirits that have crept in. And I know we've, we've been on these, so I'm going to skip all this. The resurrection is named 40 times in the New Testament. Easter once. So why do we put them together? Because man has, right? So why don't we just break it apart? Because man won't. Why won't man? Because of rebellion. What does rebellion bring in? Witchcraft. What does witchcraft bring in? Separation from God. Confusion. Confusion. One day, what is he saying? I thought it was this. That is that. This guy preaches this. This guy preaches that. So the whole time we're only here and here, and then every and the lost is being lost. The problem is the debate is no longer it is truth or a lie. It is the heart of rebellion that Jesus said the Holy Spirit is the Word. And the making of those things that are set apart. Look, those those that want to be set apart to the Word of God and the Spirit, like religious zealots. Instead of lovers of freedom. Now, we're lovers of freedom because that's where the freedom is. The Word and the Spirit. In Him, we live and breathe and have our being. If Jesus says, I don't have to do that, why do I have to do that? Because man wants me to do that. Why do I get that pressure? And I got to get this person a present. And then I got to get this person a present. And, it's, and, 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 and of course, it's good. It's all about giving because God, God so loved the world that He gave His Son. And whoever shall believe in Him shall not perish and have everlasting life. John 3, 16. But He gave His Son. But He gives His Son every day to somebody. Well, every day we should celebrate giving. You see what I'm saying? So what we do is we make these holidays and we begin to focus on things. But the, the whole world's doing it. Why? Because it really isn't the authoritative spirit. If the church only did it and did it rightly, the world wouldn't do it just like Nobody's doing Passover and all those other things if they're not part of that. But why does everybody seem to celebrate Christmas? And now we're now on to that one because that's a whole other one too. Because it's been mixed. It's been mixed. It's been mixed years after the Bible was written. And if, and if God wanted us to, to keep... Uh, track of days and everything, he would tell us all that he actually says, let no man judge you of a holy day. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to get into that of your freedom in Christ. Well, why? You need to do this. You know, I need to do what he tells me to do. And a lot of people, I did. We all like, we fall in love with those things. That's the problem. We're so soul tied to them. I used to love, we're looking for the Easter basket. Book, chocolate and candy. What kid? You can take that from my kids. And then the other, you know, that's the whole thing. The devil doesn't make it a pile of poop. Oh, everyone in the house poop in the basket, and the kids are going to find it. Yeah, they'll get rid of that, that tradition real quick. 
No, put candy, put this, put now, you know, probably putting lottery tickets in there. Who knows what's in the baskets now? And, you know, it's something we all want. We like to find things and then do the kids. But the world does that. And then when they get saved, we're supposed to like, okay, that's not what we do. So then you raise the kid up. Why don't you just do something? I mean, even recognizing it in a way is to me is, but there's a way you can even do it without. But then you have the churches that are selling Easter eggs at the foyer and they lose their church. I've been there to sell big chocolate eggs. Two years later, the church is gone, and they're at with somebody else's church. And then you have somebody that go out and they hide Easter eggs, all the thing. So when people, the world gets confused. What is egg, color eggs? And to wait, rabbits don't lay eggs. What does this, this make sense? God's what? Wait, don't chickens lay eggs? What came first, the chicken or the egg? And and they're saying what this? And it's like, okay, well, Easter, Christmas colors, pink, and this is like, they have no agreement. So the world's like. They don't even know. It must be the new birth. So they make this thing up and they say that everybody's crazy to say it's not. It's ridiculous. The thing is, God wants you to bless and give gifts and all that. But the thing is, the tradition of the thing, he says he hates it. It doesn't bother me so much anymore. I really don't bother. But if he's on me about it, then it must still bother him. Things bother God that aren't going to bother us. And things used to bother me a lot more that don't. Is that, am I have the problem? Or maybe I need to get back even closer to him in a way in different things. Because, you know, maybe all the bashing of the people and you trying to stand up for God wears on you. Why is it the most resistance we have is the church that does not want to give up their traditions and their rituals. Right? The world's like, I don't care. Celebrate. You tell the church, oh, come on, don't be so religious. Oh, come on, it's... God loves it. Oh, He uses it. Yeah. It's like all... Oh, why? But because they have to make excuses for their sin. They have to explain that why they're not going to do it. There's got to be a good way because I don't want to let go because I don't want to face... You know? And then you got the prideful people that do it and they just bash everyone else that does it. I mean, we can't do that either. I don't want man leading me. That's not telling the truth. Or just skips over it all. What kind of thing is that? People have questions. People want to know the truth. It's our job to tell them the truth. The oil comes down to those that are willing to pour it out. Or do we bow down to popularity, man-pleasing in the culture? Colossians 2 says, I would that you in a great conflict you I have for you and to the Lacedonian, for they have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts might be comforted. And let me tell you this, when the Paul and the, these, were, these guys were writing this, they, they knew Jesus, they knew what he was about, they knew what he hated, and they weren't going to let those things in. But they knew they were going, and Paul would warn them that evil men and seducers will come and creep in the church, and false prophets, and they will deceive, and, they will, and even those that are worldly, and carnality, to be, to be carnally minded is to separate yourself from God. So we want to... We want to make people spiritually minded. That's the pulpit's job is to make you spiritually minded. To, to, to make you realize what is carnal that you want to be spiritual. Not to, to um, preach here about carnality and to, uh, um, to strengthen your carnal mind. To make you uh, agree that what your flesh wants is right. It's the opposite. It's easy to do that. It'll fill the seats. But Jesus emptied stadiums he didn't fill them he emptied them they followed him because they heard of his fame they followed him because they heard of his name they followed him because they heard what he did but when he started preaching he emptied the stadium they all went home and they all were murmuring and saying who can do this this guy's nuts so is this guy nuts or does the cross cost is this guy really nuts, or is he really here to set us free? Do they really knew what freedom was? Did the rich young ruler really know what Jesus really wanted to do for him? If he did, he would have gave it up because he would have known he would have got back more in eternal life. Do we do things because of what we think here? Because if we really follow him, it's here. And as we follow him here, he renews us up here. In whom he hid the treasures it says, understanding the acknowledgement of the mystery of God the Father 
and of Christ, in whom hid the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and steadfastness in your faith, as you have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. He didn't say worship Him on this day. Walk in Him. Because when you walk in Him, you're worshiping Him. You don't have to lift up your hands to worship God. You have to have a heart connected to, to yes. A constant yes is worshiping Him. And a constant... Re, 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 um, and then He makes it easier for us to renounce our flesh so our flesh dies because we begin to stop exercising it. We begin to stop feeding it. We begin to stop listening to it. We begin to la- stop letting it be run by traditions or daily weeks and, and months and hours of the day to be uh, by the Spirit. And that can only be done by the work of the Holy Spirit. But when I got to stop my day, my ear, why not for a tradition, that's why Jesus said, your traditions, Pharisees, make the gospel of no effect. Because you're over there doing that, how can you be over here doing what I want? You're preaching about that, but I'm in spirit doing that. You see, it's very simple. We don't want to be, you know, we don't want to be party poopers. We just want to set people free. Because I didn't realize how much I didn't really love those things until they were not part of my life. And now people look and I'm like, no, no, going to have, oh, coming over. I said, oh, pizza Sunday. Oh, it was banned for the last five years. going to be today. Just another day. Just another day, every day's Resurrection Day. Every day's walking in the glory. Every day I sing to Him. Every day I pray to Him. Every day I admonish Him. Every day is the day of the Lord. And that's what He says. Even when people try to make Saturday a special day. No, it's every day now. We are spiritual beings. We are seated in heavenly places. He doesn't... He would rather you rebel against tradition and religion than than conform to it. Because you know what happens is people decide, oh, it's religious. I, so you only go to listen to the Word three times a year? What is, what is the third one I keep thinking? We know it's the Christmas and we know it's Easter. What's the other one that? Thanksgiving. Eh, a little bit. They, they kind of preach on that, but that was kind of an American thing, wasn't it? Sunday. Huh? Good Friday. Palm, Good Friday, Palm Sunday. <laughs> Tell me where the ash is in the Bible, too. Where do they have ash Sunday? It's not there. So why are you going to... And then, and you used to think it's real cool when you didn't really know Jesus. You're like, I want to do something. I want to be part of something. That's where the red dot... It's like, I'm downtown in the middle seat. I see these ashes all over people. I first got saved. And I'm like, because you don't know that, you know, they're not really knowing the word. They're just following traditions. And And all these people walking all day with all this dirt on their face. And I'm like, so I'm like, what is that? Oh, it's ash. And I'm like, well, you better wash your face. (laughs) Like, what do you want to be? You know, it's all about standing out, right? Oh, we're going to fast something. One time a year, I'm going to fast chocolate. Whoa, you're so, what a sacrifice, right? To them, it's a big deal, right? Oh, my God. It's like, doesn't God want more than just a day? Still, right? He wants every day. He's not going to make you fast every day, but he wants you to be willing to do what he wants. Wow. Oh, I'm going to stain from, from, Oh, what is it? Um, well, you know, I, I'm not going to go on Facebook one day. Oh, my God, you're, that's, you know, whatever. It's those types of things that's like, wow, and they, they make that a big deal. And none of them really end up doing it. I'm not going to drink wine today. You know, those are the things that, that this, what is it, Lent or whatever? Yeah, it's Lent. It's like, uh, it's the righteous garments. Yeah, get that Lent off of it. Get all the Lent off and get in, in, in and be free. Anyway, so... Don't, lest any man should beguile you with their, with their traditions, their wisdom, in order that it be steadfast in faith in Christ. Therefore you receive Christ, walk in Him, being rooted and built up in Him, established in faith. You that have been taught when, with thanksgiving, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, or after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world. It's right here. And not after Christ. 
Just because someone talks about Christ or makes a holiday about him doesn't mean he's in it or about it. Right? Just like the Easter being written in the Bible doesn't mean sinners are written in the Bible. So do we become a sinner because it's we saw it written? Come on, guys. But it's okay when it's easy. Right? But see, the thing is, most people do not want to... See, Jesus said, I came to bring division. Father against mother, brother up against... These type of things are going to bring division. He said, that's what I came to, to divide you from all of these things that bind you. The fullness of God and complete in Him, which is the head of principalities and power, in whom also you're circumcised and circumcision made without hands. The circumcision. He's cutting off the soul ties of the world, the heart, the things that you used to do before you knew Him. And a lot of people do things and they say they know Him because they're different denominations, all that they're born into. I was born into... I think it was Baptist and we ended up going to Methodist because they would pick you up at the house in the bus and mom didn't have to drop you off. So I became a Methodist because of convenience. But I was first a Baptist, but then a Baptist. And then we moved to another city. Then we became Pentecostals because grandma started going to the Pentecostal church. And of course, they were free because you could lift up your hand and scream. So now that was a cool church because now, and they had a youth group. So it wasn't nothing about the doctrine. It was always about the tradition. It was always about what was convenient, right? That's why Jesus came and flipped the tables in the temple because they, became, they made their sacrifices and their life out of convenience. Instead of doing the sacrifice and finding it and killing the dove, they were just buying it right there and doing it. That's what we do when we only want to go to church or, or, or come together with Christians on certain days of the year. When He wants us to be coming together all the time because of the Spirit. The Spirit that brings this. Let no man separate what God puts together. No man separate what the Spirit puts together. Because I can make up some things that it can sound spiritual. I can, you know, make up all these traditions of men and even write books about it and say why. You know, just like, and then, and then the religious people always want to say, like Halloween, oh, it's Lutheran, it's the day of Reformation. Then they do this, the other one about Valentine's Day, but oh, it's the, the saint, Valen there's always a saint involved, right? It's funny, it's always a saint involved when, when the saints came out of the Catholic Church, right? It's funny about that too, because, but when you go back to the foundation of the word, it's not written there. So yeah, it might have been transformed to Constantine and man, but really, so they'll argue about you because they want to keep it. But Valentine's is a pagan. That's so demonic because it's a false love. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a totally uh, different kind of love than the love of God. And, and again, that's so, it causes so many problems, right? Because nothing's done right. Let's celebrate the things that happened once in a lifetime that God ordained for us seven, like marriages, right? Right? Anniversaries aren't really written. There's the marriage. That's the celebration. Now you celebrate your wife every day. You don't have to pick now a day of the year. That also puts bondage on marriages. We've made that up. I bet you it was women that made that up. Some woman made up an anniversary thing. And... <laughs> You know, and the man will do it because, you know, we want to please the Lord. But some, if you really go, it's like, what about just, it's Wednesday and God leads on your heart. Oh, bring your wife flowers, you know, because when you make it that day, then you forget that day because you're busy doing the Lord's will or something. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. you forgot. You know, it's like it puts bondage, right? So if we just learn to love and be led by the Spirit, we can celebrate each other's lives when God leads us, because that person needs a hug right now. Oh, I'm hugging him. I got to hug him now because it's his birthday. Well, no, I'm going to hug him now because the Spirit's leading me to hug this person. I'm going to take this person out to dinner now because I need a, they need someone to talk to. Oh, let's stop the world because it's a tradition. That's what he doesn't want in the church. Not that they're bad. No, they all have good, good intentions and meaning. But they stumble us in our freedom in Christ. You see, God didn't say things are not going to be good, but we're not here to, to do what's good. We're here to do what He tells us to do, like in the spiritual way. And for that draw us the fullness out of the complete in the principalities and powers, human circumcised and circumcision made without the hands, putting off the body of sin and the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with Him in baptism. That's every day. Wherein we are also risen with Him, 
through the faith and operation of God. Now, I'm not resurrected today. I'm resurrected every day. I'm dead. I'm seated with Him in heavenly places. He wants us to, to, to focus on our seating, our sitting place every day with Him. He doesn't want us to have to go back to the resurrection. Let's keep seating with Him. Raised from the dead, being from the dead, your sins and, and uncircumcision of the flesh has quickened us together with Him, forgiving our trespasses, blotting out the handwriting and the ordinances that were written against us, which was on the contrary to us, took us out of the way, nailing it to the cross. That's why Paul said, I'm not going to set a day to remember this. I'm going to die daily. I'm going to pick up my cross every day. Jesus said, if you do not pick up your cross and follow me. So people just say, okay, I'm going to pick up my cross on Christmas and on Easter. And the rest of the day, I'm not even going to go to church and listen to a sermon. I don't want to hear that stuff. Right? Do you think God's going to want to honor that? No. Yeah, of course they do. Of course, people go there because they feel they don't want to lose eternal life, but they don't really want to have freedom in life today. Blotting out the handwritings, and he has spoiled the principalities of hell, nailing them to the cross, made a show of them, and triumphant over them. Let no man judge you by meat. Or drink, or respect of a holy day, or a holiday, or a new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Don't let people judge you if you don't celebrate. Because there's people in the church. What do you mean? You got to come to church. I can't believe you didn't come. It's okay last Sunday, you know, you didn't want to come, but you didn't come on Easter day. God's going to be so mad. This is resurrection day. Don't you know? And you, go, you, know, you just drag yourself there, hungover, whatever, because it's, you know, it's the tradition. God's good. And then Catholic, Catholic God's you know, you got to go midnight mass on Christmas Day. Midnight mass. You dare, you know, you don't go all year, but, you know, we're all there. We're all standing around the pagan tree, bowing down to the idols. And then we got to, everyone get up, load up. Let's go to the pagan mass so the priest, the man, can tell us it's okay now. It's all about the heart, man, and we just, these traditions, we make them so obvious and we think they're really what God likes, but it's not. Which are the shadow of things to come. Well, how long has that shadow been coming? But the body of Christ. Let no man beguile you in the road of voluntary humanity and worship of angels or worship and anything in those things that you have seen or have been puffed up in your vainly fleshly mind. And not with holding the head, which is the body of Christ, who joins in the bands, having nourished, ministered, and knit together, increases with the increase of God. Therefore, the dead in Christ be dead to the rudiments of this world. Why do you live in this world? You shall be subject to its ordinances and its affections, which shall perish after the using and after the commandments and doctrines of men. So it's written, he was really prophesying really good right here. Which things indeed show the wisdom of the worship and the humility of the neglecting of the body, nor the honor and the satisfaction of the flesh. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, he says, Therefore, Son of strong grace, be Christ Jesus with you, that these things have you heard among the witnesses that commit to faithful men, who shall teach others also, that they endure hardness as a good soldier. No man that entangles himself with the affairs of this life, the traditions of this life, the rudiments of the world, that he may please God that has chosen him to be a soldier, to standing against those things. What does a soldier do? He fights the lies. Right? He doesn't sit down and conform to them. If any man also strive about masters and is not crowned, except he strive lawfully, the husband is that labor, that his first partakers of the fruit, consider that he may... And the Lord give him the understanding of all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to... The gospel, my gospel, he said, wherein he had suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. He was an evildoer, troublemaker. Remember Elijah too was called a troublemaker to, to, because he was speaking what God wanted and not what the traditions and, and their time wanted them to do. And the kings and, the, and those, he said, no, you're a troublemaker because you, you come here, you know, you're another party pooper. Elijah was the Israel party pooper. And they called him a troublemaker. Right? And that's what, that's what Jesus was now, a troublemaker. If you suffer, you shall reign with Him. If you deny Him, He will deny us. If you believe Him, yet He abide faithful. He cannot deny Himself. He cannot deny His Word. 
of these things, put in remembrance, charging them that you strive not in words to profit the subverting of the hearers. Study, study to show yourself to prove unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we went back, we found that word Easter here. We said, well, that was written then. The church wasn't even really formed. They were killing Christians. Easter came into the church, was brought in as a church thing, 300, uh, uh, 270 years later. So they must not have been talking about anything to do with the church. Boom, we just rightly divided the word of truth. There's nothing that we should even pay homage to that. That Back then, that made sense to them, but to us, it's like, well, why are they going to wait for Easter? Oh, let's not kill Christians today because, you know, it's their holy day. Uh, okay. Put in remembrance, but, but these pastors, they preach that every time. Study, show yourselves, and prove unto God a workman, needing not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But... And, and, and profane, vain babblings that will increase more and more into ungodliness the word. And their word will eat, does a canker, does a canker to Hamilus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred. This is the Bible. And you're like, oh, it's not a big deal. But it's to God it is. They were making because a little compromise, a little tradition makes the gospel of no effect. Saying the resurrection has passed already, overthrowing some in the faith. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knows those are who are His. And let everyone that named the Lord Jesus Christ depart from iniquity, depart from traditions, depart. But a great house, there are vessels of silver. See, in a church, in a house, like, and let's think about that, the American church, right? There's a house of God, but also of hay, wood, earth, and some of honor and some of dishonor. So what is that? He was just talking about the rudiments of the world, the traditions of man, and the things that creep in the church. If any man therefore purge himself from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in meat for the master. He's prepared for every good work. Prepared for every good work. Oh, can't do the good work. I got a, I got a, I got a tradition here I got to follow. Jesus set us free from our traditions. Flee also y lustful uh, youth, and traditions, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive to be gentle unto all, apt to teach and patient and meekness, instructing those that may oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance according to the truth. So why aren't they, why aren't they repenting? Because so many people are saying now, because they're man pleasers. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they just drop it? Drop the name. Drop the eggs. Drop the things. Drop the and even drop resurrection and just blow everybody's mind and preach about something the Holy Spirit's preaching about, like offense on that day. Don't even mention the cross. Oh my God! Like, oh, what happened? They didn't talk about the resurrection today, right? It'd be like people. I'm gonna find another church. They're gonna they're off the they don't even talk. I was like, what? It's like is the spirit talking about one thing one day? When has that ever been written? I will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who has taken them captive at his will. John 4. This is very important here because Jesus said that I'm coming. I know this is where this is the well where Jacob drank from, and where this is where they were supposed to meet to worship. He says, "Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, you know, a certain place, a certain time, a certain and that is in Jerusalem, or a place where men ought to worship." And Jesus said, "On a woman, believe me, church, believe the Spirit. The hour comes." When they shall neither say, worship over here, worship like this, worship on this day, nor yet in Jerusalem, or even on a Sabbath day, worship the Father every day. You worship me what you know not what you worship, because you're worshiping out of a written letter or a book, or, or you're supposed to do this. But real worships of the heart, of the freedom of the heart, the freedom of religion, not freedom to have religion, 
the freedom of religion. See, our country wants the freedom to have religion. God wants the freedom of religion. Worship me what you know, what, what we know, what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, because what? He was standing there. When true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is spirit. And these traditions weren't written by this inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They were written by man. God is spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And what has been written is the truth. We don't go off of it. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just is not the purity of the truth. The woman said unto him, I know the Messiah coming, which is called Christ. When he comes, he'll tell us all things. And he's telling us all things today. Romans 12, 1 through 8. We know that this means, and I'm about to close, that's the epitome, the whole idea of Christianity is us becoming spiritual beings where we no longer be led by the flesh, but of the Spirit, that we no longer be led by the law, but of the Holy Spirit, that we no longer be led by the traditions of men and the rudiments of the world, but by the Spirit of truth. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's always freedom. We're not always, we always think about shackles. What about the shackles of the mind? The shackles of I have to do this, or I have to do this, I have to please this man, I have to please this person, I have to please this one. Tell us these things. Romans 12, 1 through, beseech you, brethren, that the mercy of the Lord present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, or the traditions of this world, or the rudiments of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, what is right, what is acceptable, and what is the perfect will of God. So how many people today are doing their own will and not the will of God? How many people really need a, a, a spiritual message today? They already know Christ resurrected. I mean, even the heathen know about that. What about something else that God wants them to know? You get them in a building and they're going to hear the same thing they heard last year. How about tell them something new? How about the Holy Spirit moves because you're obeying Him and speaking what He wants you to do? For I say, though the grace is given to us, that every man that is among you not think himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly according to God as though every man a measure of faith. Last scripture, everybody can stand. If you want to. If the Spirit leads you to. <laughs> Second Corinthians 6, 11 through 18. O oh, you Corinthians, your mouth is open unto you. Your heart is enlarged. You are not straightened in us, but you are straightened in your own bowels. Now, for recompense of the same, I speak as unto my children. Be ye enlarged. Be not equally yoked. Together with unbelievers, for the fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, has with a, and has what communion has light with darkness, and what concord has Christ with Belial, and what part has believeth with an infidel, and the agreement of this is the part right here, though the agreement of the temple of idols. See, Issachar was an idol, so if we know that something birthed out of an idolatry and all that, why would we even want to to, to think about it? Why would we even give it a name? Why would we even... That's what they do in Hollywood. Well, we'll just, you know, we'll dress up as this and that. And we won't do the dark, dark stuff. But why even give homage to Why even act like it exists? Be free from it. It's not even of your life. But you're so... We're so um, engrafted in, into this culture and this life, into religiosity and the traditions of men. The temple of living God, and God has said, I will dwell in them. I will tell, that is so, so much of a greater problem. We don't have to go, see, go remember a day. He's dwelling in us today. And walk in them. And I will be their God. And they will be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. And separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the pagan thing, the unclean thing, the ritual thing. The thing that doesn't set you free. 
and I will receive you, and I will be your father, and you unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. That's the truth right there. This is the new life. It's daily. It's we have it. We live in it. It's not something we celebrate. It's something we, we live out. Father, we thank you that anyone in Christ is a new creation. Old things pass away. All things become new. Every day we're renewing. We're not focusing on something that you did. We're focusing on something that you're doing right now in us and around us in the future. I don't, anyone looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. I don't want to look back to something you did, God. I want to look back, I want to look at what you're doing right now. Right now amongst us, what pleases you, God? What do you hate? I want to hate. What you love, I want to love. And what you do, I want to do. What you say, I want to say. Where you go, I want to go. Where you are, I want to be. I want to be moved by the Spirit, not by the flesh, not by the works of the world, not by the traditions of man and all the things, oh God, I want to be pure religion. I want to be led to the orphan and the widow. I want to keep myself unspotted from the world. I want what you want, God. I want to obey your word. I want to rightly divide the word of truth. I want to live in a place of, of peace. In the kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness. I want to learn how to to renounce those things, to not be involved without being so torn, to be free. Eventually, they'll stop asking. Eventually, they'll, they'll just love you the way you are because there's no other choice. The devil will use people, places, and things to keep you there. And then when he knows that it does not, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. When you keep giving in to him, he ain't going to flee. When you just continue to resist it, Resist it. You'll see how many people... No, it's like... Even this, it's like... It's so different. And it's because... It's the, the freedom in Christ. We cannot be... Bowed down by our family's gods... Or our friend's God... Or the nation's God. The only God that we serve is the God of freedom and, 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 and truth. And His name is Jesus Christ. And He did die on the cross. And He did raised from the dead, and He's right here among us. And He is saying something. And He might be saying the same thing in the spirit of the church, but who is catching it today? Or who is saying what religion and tradition wants them to say? Who is saying what the people are expecting the man of God to say today? And who is really saying what the spirit of truth says? When, when Paul talked to those different churches, he talked to exactly the issue they needed. What is the issue that you need to be talked about today. That's what the Holy Spirit will give you if you're looking for daily bread. But if you're looking for tradition and all those things, you can eat from that table too. But Jesus has set a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And He's setting a table before us today. And He's setting a feast and we're to feast on Him and to drink His blood and eat His flesh. And Father, I thank You, Lord, that many will learn how to the church will, will evolve and adapt and come out from among them and separate themselves and do not be, be mixed. Even in the Old Testament, they had mixture things. It was all about mixing paganism and the worldly gods with God. It was all about spiritual fornication. Spiritual fornication. What do you think the book of Revelation is all about? Spiritual fornication. You think we really kiss Baal? No, we kiss the devil when we do want to keep in in, 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 in um, affection with the things that it produces out of death. So Father, we want everything that's produced out of life. In you, in you, we live, we breathe, and we have our being. In you is the new life. And we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.